So, as those of you who are familiar with it, you'll know that the second chapter of the Kaogao Shinsho covers the topic of great practice. In that chapter, in Shinran's own words, he says, As I reverently contemplate the phase of going of the merit transference, which is the phase that was discussed in my previous video back in chapter one regarding the true teaching. As I reverently contemplate the phase of going of the merit transference, there are the great practice and the great faith. The great practice is to utter the name of the Tathagata of unhindered light, which of course is Amida Buddha. The unhindered light is the light unhindered in the ten directions. And I'm not sure I can recall exactly why the sutras talk about the ten directions, but what I take it to mean is that they're talking about all the directions of the universe. I guess it would be north, south, east, west, northeast, northwest, blah, 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 and then the nadir and the, uh, and the, uh, the zenith. So in any case, the great practice is to utter the name of the Tathagata of unhindered light. And I'll mention as a sidebar um, that when I had my Sarana Affirmation Ceremony at the Ekoji Temple, which is a Jodo Shinshu Temple in the Washington, D.C. area many years ago, back in the, the 80s, um, a Buddhist name was bestowed upon me, which was Daigyo or Daigyo. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced, but what it means is great practice. But while we can talk about the great practice being the recitation of the Nembutsu, Namu Amida Butsu, or I take refuge in Amida Buddha, the Nembutsu being the the essence of the uh, the teaching of Dharmakara's vow, that we also need to keep in mind that in Jodo Shinshu there is no practice in the sense of something that's required of us. When we say the Nembutsu, perhaps the first time we say it in faith or in entrustment is that moment of Shinjin when we gain assurance of rebirth. But once we gain that assurance, that, that never leaves us. And so there's no need to continue reciting the, the name except in the context of expressing our gratitude. Uh, in fact, um, uh, the situation in reality is that um, the, the gift of uh, assurance of our rebirth in the pure land is a gift, is given to us by the grace of Amida Buddha, the Tathagata of unhindered light. So in the next uh, second verse of this uh, second chapter, uh, Shinran himself says, this practice, which again is saying the Nembutsu, which we say in gratitude, as Renyo um, commented upon and, and instructed us in over and over again, that this practice embodies all good and contains all virtues. So the saying of the Nembutsu um, is, is what we do. And even though he's talking about the name, um, again, we need to remember that it's not actually even critical to say Namu Amida Butsu as much as to have that orientation in one's mind, in one's heart at the time of initial entrustment, which in itself is not something we are doing, but something Amida is endowing to us. He gives us his name. So this practice embodies all good and contains all virtues. It enables sentient beings to attain the all complete merits very quickly. The name is the treasure sea of the virtues of true thusness or one truth, one truth being the absolute. And I often think of thusness or suchness as, in a sense, the flip side of sunyata. Sunyata or emptiness, the key term and concept, if you want to think of it as a concept, which it's really not, within Mahayana Buddhism in general and within the Prajnaparamita Sutras in particular, is, to my mind, indicating that any individual dharma or entity is empty of its own separate individualized identity. But it doesn't mean that there's nothing. In other words, it's not nihilism. Because the flip side is thusness or suchness, 
And that is the actual experience that we have that you, whoever may be listening to this right now has, right now, here and now, the actual sense of what is real right now in terms of your senses, your thinking. That is such as that is reality right now. Um, that's important. Hence, the name is called the Great Practice. Now, this practice originates from the vow of great compassion, which is, of course, Dharmakara's 18th vow within the larger Sukhavati Sutra. This vow is called the vow that the name shall be glorified by all Buddhas, and also the vow that the name shall be praised by all Buddhas, and it is also called the vow that the name shall be lauded by all Buddhas. So I touched on this in the last video to the effect that I think it was in Bodhi, in Dharmakara's 17th vow that he talks about that, uh, that if he becomes Buddha, if he fulfills these vows, that his name, Namo Mitabutsu, the Amida Buddha, will be praised by all the Buddhas in the Ten Quarters, all the Buddhas in the universe. That this extremely expeditious, simple way to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi that is entrustment in this Bodhisattva's vow, who later became Amida Buddha, and saying the name as an expression of that entrustment and subsequently as an expression of gratitude. That this is the, in many ways, a, a supreme methodology for human beings to get in touch with their spiritual natures and manifest those natures in the context of our um, limited limited and ignorant and delusional really wrong-headed perception of reality that is created as a result of our dualistic thinking mind so anyway again the vow can be called the vow of the phase of going of the merit transference and we've talked about that, the vow, the vow of going and the vow of returning. And also the vow of the selected practice of uttering the name. So this is the practice that was selected. Now, I have to say here that some other sects of Buddhism may assert that other mantras or phrases have been selected. And the most notable one, of course, is the, the Nishran school, where the selected phrase is Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, or I pay homage to the Lotus Sutra. Now, anybody watching my videos knows that I pay great homage to the Lotus Sutra. And I'm very comfortable saying Nam Yoho Renge Kyo. Um, I love the Lotus Sutra, and I love the teachings within it. And again, I've made the case that that Shinran himself was deeply immersed in the Lotus Sutra and that when he talks about the one vehicle um, that you know that he's making reference to the all-embracing teaching of universal salvation within the Lotus Sutra. So the point being that if we recognize the limits of words and concepts which is so fundamental to Mahayana Buddhism and the Prajnaparamita Sutras in particular. We have to recognize that it's not the words. It's not the words Namo Amida Butsu. It's not the words Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. It's a focusing on a mantra with a certain entrustment, submission, recognition of our own limitations, recognition of the fact that our perception of reality is dualistic and delusional in some fundamental sense that allows us as a sentient being to resonate with and be more in touch with that larger reality of which we are a part. We are interconnected. We're all interconnected. So um, is that how Shinran would have described it? I don't know. Is that speaking out of both sides of our mouths? I don't know. Then Shinran starts to quote excerpts from various passages to support this uh, assertion that he's made regarding the name. And he concludes that the utterance of the name 
destroys all the ignorance or delusions or doubt of sentient beings and fulfills the aspirations of sentient beings, the aspiration to become a Buddha, the aspiration to attain Anuttara Samyak Sambodhi that's talked about so much, for example, in the, uh, uh, in the Prajnaparamita Sutras. And what we should keep in mind is that faith or entrustment in the name and, and in Amita's vow and in his assurance is nothing but the wholehearted acceptance of the name. In the next verse after that, Shinran says, the utterance of the name is the supreme and truly wonderful right act. The right act is the Nembutsu. The Nembutsu is Namu Amida Butsu. Namu Amida Butsu is the right recollection. This we should know. So um, he doesn't leave any uh, doubt there as to what his uh, assertion is with respect to um, the nature of this phrase, Namu Amida Butsu. As it says in the notes to this translation, it is the name which signifies the fulfillment of his saving activities, namely Amida's saving activities. In what way? The name destroys our delusions and fulfills our Buddhist aspirations. The Nembutsu is the manifestation of the name's activity, and faith is nothing but the wholehearted acceptance of the name. And it's important to note that in Shin Buddhism, faith and practice are not separate, and that the name uttered and the practice of utterance are not discriminated. So, in a way, isn't this similar to the Zen perspective, specifically Dogen's perspective, to the effect that um, there's no difference between um, practice and realization, between sitting Zazen and being enlightened, which is a pretty radical kind of notion, but from a non-dualistic from a non-dualistic perspective, doesn't it make sense? Let me close by reciting without interruption the few verses that uh, that I've covered in this particular video. As I reverently contemplate the phase of going of the merit transference, there are the great practice and the great faith. The great practice is to utter the name of the Tathagata of unhindered light. This practice embodies all good and contains all virtues. It enables sentient beings to attain the all-complete merits very quickly. It is the treasure sea of the virtues of true thusness, or one truth. Hence, it is called the great practice. Now, this practice originates from the vow of great compassion. This vow is called the vow that the name shall be glorified by all Buddhas, and also the vow that the name shall be praised by all Buddhas. It is also called the vow that the name shall be lauded by all Buddhas. Again, it can also be called the vow of the phase of going of the merit transference, and also the vow of the selected practice of uttering the name. The utterance of the name destroys all the ignorance of sentient beings and fulfills all the aspirations of sentient beings. The utterance of the name is the supreme and truly wonderful right act. The right act is the Nambutsu. The Nambutsu is Namo Mirabutsu. Namo Mirabutsu is the right recollection. This we should know.